this video will cover a little bit of detail about adjusting bone on a chrome natural case. What we have done is on these cases is we have made two models. Uh, these are bone level models. You can see the teeth are already removed. It's already socketed. The one with red indicates where we have adjusted the bone. And this is the pre-adjustment case. So we, we pin the fixation base to the bone model here in the laboratory with our, with our kit. These, these holes are not completely drilled out. That's why you'll see the pin sticking out. Obviously these should be flush. But what we do is we will adjust the bone sockets and we'll adjust the scalloping until the scallop guide seats, until it seats passively. And on some cases, there is a little bit more aggressive adjustment than we have on this case. This case hardly has any adjustment at all. There is red, so we did adjust all these areas, you see, uh, but even before we adjusted, the uh, scallop guide seated and pinned and was passive, but we still needed to make some room here for a Pontic. Uh, we had to open up, as you can see here, we'll just kind of uh, mirror the two. So in this site here, we opened up the socket a little bit in red. Here on this site, as you can see, right inside of this site here, maybe number three or four, number three, uh, number four, sorry. Uh, there's just some bone there in the way that will affect the pontic design of the restoration. We adjusted some of the mesial on this site, uh, et cetera, around the arch. These are two pontic sites here. So we just um, offered a, a way for you to see the outline of a proposed pontic divot and you can adjust it. And so this, the one way to do it is with the socket guide, the other, the scallop guide, the other is to take the prosthetic. Uh, this is the rapid appliance prosthetic, uh, which actually has a, can have a couple different designs depending on the case, but this is just a duplicate of the prosthetic. You could use this one, but this one doesn't have metal reinforcement. It's not quite as strong or you can actually use the conversion prosthetic uh, to seat until it's passive. Now, it's very important to be careful with these arms in the mouth. If they break off, you lose your tripoding. If one breaks off, you could still, uh, you know, you can still clip them into the other chrome locks, but if you lose one, you're gonna lose a little bit of the balance uh, that you need to seat these cases. Now, you'll see here underneath, Pontic needs adjusted, right, that sight. Uh, under number nine, and then a little bit under uh, uh, seven, I'm sorry, um, under 12, 13, you can see those were the sites we also adjusted. So as when you're in the mouth, when you're in surgery, you will notice where it's not passive and that's where to adjust it. Now you have the option on some of these cases, this prosthetic is quite thick. This is uh, actually a very nice thickness for a prosthetic but you'll see there's some limitations, you know, where you can only really get eight or nine millimeters of vertical space. And if you find that's the deal with your case, then it's, more important, it's much more important to adjust the bone than adjust the prosthetic. If you keep making the prosthetic thinner and thinner and thinner until it's passive, you'll end up long-term with a thin prosthetic or the necessity to open the bite down the road. And there are limitations always with opening a bite on FP1s, uh, not always, but many times. So that is the process of adjusting the bone in the mouth uh, or if lab partners, that is how you adjust the, uh, the bone on the socketed model.